In today's show, we're going to talk about the text function inside of Power Apps, and we're going to use it to format currencies and numbers. This beginning type of topic, this thing that I assume everyone knows that I actually realize everyone doesn't know, is going to give us a chance to talk about a bunch of number formats, whether it's currency or leading zeros, percents, that type of stuff. We're going to do a little troubleshooting, and we're also going to talk about how multiple languages come into play. It turns out you all don't use dollars. Who knew? But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about the text function in Power Apps. The idea here is we're going to look at it from the number point of view, right? Because the text function can also be used for dates and some other tricks. We're just going to concentrate on the number side. And mostly we're going to concentrate around formatting currencies. So whether that's adding dollar signs, comma separators, um, decimal points, leading zeros, trailing zeros, all of those types of shenanigans. We're also going to look a little bit about the language side of it, so at least you have an understanding of kind of how, you know, I do everything in U.S. English because I'm American and we're in the middle of the country and that's what I speak. But I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about how the other languages can play into it, how you have some control there. And then last but not least, I also want to incorporate a little bit of troubleshooting along the way because I know that a lot of you or like, hey, I wrote this exact formula, but I'm, it's not formatting it. It's not giving you an error message. It's not formatting it. So we want to cover what that is. Okay, so that's enough blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here, I've got just a blank app. I just thought we'd start at the beginning. And I think what we'll do is just to make testing easier, we're going to throw a text input on the screen. And so with the text input, right, it'll give us a chance to enter information. And just to make sure that I don't mess up and add any actual text, we're going to go ahead and change the text input to be number. Very cool. And then down here below, we're going to throw in a label and we're going to say, all right, label, just show us what's in text input one. Like so. Awesome. So then now we should be able to just test that we can type $12.50. Okay. So there we go. We've got a way to input data and see the data. Those are the hardest two things, not hardest, but the two things we need to cover. So now what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about how do we make 1250 show up as currency. So if we go up here, you're going to see like with our label, we have a text property. And so what you need to do is we're going to use a text function actually. So there's a function called text. So just like that. The first thing that it wants is you to provide a value. So text input one text should be perfect. We'll jump to the end, do a comma, and it says format text. And so if you write your formula something like this, doom, 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 da da, wait a minute. So right off the bat, you're like, Shane, there you go. That's the thing I just described in the intro. I wrote the formula, but it's not doing anything. Okay. So this is the number one mistake I see with this. The reason for that is if you hover over text input one text, it is text. So even though we told the text input to only allow numbers, it still outputs everything as text. The text function doesn't work against text. Text, text, text. It's like a little teenager. Yeah. Anyway, so what that means is that you need to convert the text into a value, a number. And so what you do is you use a function called value. So you wrap the text input into a value function. And so that will take the number text and turn it into a number number. Now we see we get the formatting. So keep that in mind. This is in case of a text input. Maybe you're import pulling your data in from a data source and maybe you're storing all of your numbers in text fields. And so when you pull them in, the formatting is not going to work. Ah, so you need to, you remember this value function is very important to, uh, you know, keeping your sanity, quite frankly. Okay. So at a very high level, this is how this thing works. Now, let's talk about it more what happened up here. So I quickly wrote this formula. I cheated, I know, but I've been doing this for a long time. So up here, you're going to see that there's several different characters. And let's get rid of the dollar sign first because it's yeah, confusing. But so what we're going to see here is that the pound symbol, that means optional number. So if there is a number in that place, and so in this case, if we go to the out here outside the thousand separate, there's not a number, so it doesn't show anything. So only show a number if there is a value to be shown. The same with the comma. This is as soon as you put the comma here, Power Apps says, oh, you want decimal separators. What's really neat about this, so if we go out here and we make this uh, 1234, it automatically put the comma in place. Also, what's really cool is so that's a thousand. What if we go out to a million, right? So we add three more zeros. 
it automatically knows. And we add three more for a billion, right? Like that's that's what all your bank accounts look like, right? You, you know, Power Apps is lucrative. Billions, no big deal. You're right. Anyway, so what happens here is this symbol of a comma right here tells it, hey, if I have enough places or if I need to put a uh, decimal separator, sorry, a thousand separator in place, I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Awesome. Now, look at it further. So optional number, optional number, and then a zero. So what this says is if there is a digit here, and so in our case it is a zero, then put that digit here. If that there's not a digit here, then put in a zero. So if we change our text input from all of this craziness to just 0 0.50, notice it added that front loaded zero. So that is what's giving it the ability to say, hey, if they give me one of these, show it to me. If not, don't. Then we have the period, which is our decimal separator. And then we have two zeros. So once again, if there's a number, show it to me. If there's not, show me the zero. So that would mean that if I went up here and just typed in five, it shows up as 5.00. Now what happens if you type in 5.123? It is going to automatically, it's only going to show the two places, and it's automatically going to round. So one, two, three rounds down. So if I do one, two, five, it'll round up. So I would say from my perspective that it all works the way I want. Remember, Power Apps has round functions for round up, round down. If you needed to control that in more granularity, but as a rule of thumb, if you're just trying to show this here on the screen, you know, normal rounding rules apply and hopefully they work for you. But so that is how we would do something like this. What if we always wanted it to have uh, the, the, the zeros, right? The zeros out front. So the, the leading zeros, not trailing, leading. Well, we could just change this. We got like zero comma, oh, not decimal comma, zero, zero. And so then now you can see that it has leading zeros. But if I put in um, five, four, three, two, one, then now it doesn't have leading zeros. It shows the actual digits. So you can control that as well. So a lot of this comes down to your understanding of how the zero um, works versus the number sign. And just by putting this decimal separator between two zeros, two uh, pound signs, a zero and a pound sign, by putting this, this comma in here, it automatically figures it out. Here, for example, I can even put in like a space. I know some countries, instead of using commas, they just want to separate like that, right? So then now if we do this and then we just put in, let's just add some more money here. You know, it's it starts to figure out, oh, text wrapping happened. But it's put a zero, a com, uh, sorry, it's put a space in here to um, between the digits. So you can do some formatting. Um, another thing we sometimes run into is like people want to put dashes and stuff. So maybe you want to format it out like a social security number. You could do something like, um, what is that? It's pound, 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 doom, pound, I forget, two, something like that. And so then now if I type in my social security number, no, but if I do three, 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 two, two, uh, four, 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 oh, one, two, three, fours. There you go. So now we have, you know, made it look formatted, right? Now keep in mind that because this text output, you probably could guess this, but what is the text output? It outputs text. So you can't take this formatted value, you can't take formatted currency and save that to a number field. Doesn't work that way, right? Numbers have to be saved in number fields. When you use the text function, we converted the number back into a text, or not back to, but into a text string. So you're going to have to Think about that. If you want to save this formatted way out, this is text now. This is not a number, even though there's numbers inside of there. Okay. So the other piece of this puzzle, um, let's see, let's just go back here. We'll just do a simple something like that. So three zeros. It's like, oh, there's extra digits. Cool. I'll just show those. Um, but if we wanted to add like a percent sign, we definitely could do that. So we just do a percent sign here. A lot of times for me, I'll just do more like this, right? I'll just ampersand and then throw a percent sign. And that way it's not affecting my text formula. It's just showing all the stuff and then doing it. So then that way I could be like, oh, I actually want this to be you know, 000. 000, .00. And so now I am one really big percentage. But you can see how that um, plays itself out. So I end up with the symbols out here. Now, interestingly enough, if I wanted to add the currency symbol. So I could, oh, I missed. Let's do this. So I could do this if 
you know, and sometimes, you know, some of my customers, they want the currency hard coded to US dollars, right? It's their international symbol or, or some other currency, right? But they want it all hard coded. They don't want the uh, currency symbol to be up for, you know, changing. So in those cases, I put the currency symbol outside of the formula like that. Because if you put it inside here, right? So kind of remember that first example I did was just fill this back out. So I did dollar sign, doom, doom, something like that, right? So that's giving us a formatted out currency. One of the things about this is that this one understands languages. So if you, to open up, you don't specify a hard code language. If you open this up in a, um, a French browser, right, it's going to show the Euro or, you know, Great Britain is going to show the pound. And so the, one of the ways you can see that is notice up here in the text format. So text, value, format, text, comma, dot, dot, dot. Right? Remember, that means optional something. So if we do optional something, ah, uh, Look at that. Now we can see all the different languages that Power Apps understands. So I could go down here and be like, oh, ENGB, right, for Great Britain. And so then now you see the pound symbol here. So the, in this case, now Power Apps, no matter what the user's language was, it's going to show it in the user, it's going to show it in English Great Britain. So it's going to use the pound sign, even though I just put a dollar symbol here. So by adding this, this is locking this down, saying use this language no matter what. I believe my understanding, I haven't, wasn't able to test this in time for the video, but I, the way I understand it is if you write the formula like it's written here, then there is no specified language. It's going to use the user's browser language in this particular case. Another piece of the puzzle though, that a lot of us don't know about, is there's also a label down here, or sorry, we just added a label, and so there's also a function called language. And so the language you can see for me returns ENUS. So this is the user's current browser language. So sometimes we use this if we want to know what language the user's in for maybe making decisions around multilingual apps or things like that. But one of the reasons I bring it up is if we go back up here, if you wanted to make sure this thing was locked down to the language of the logged in user, which I told you I think is the default behavior anyway, but just to be sure, then this is going to do um, that, right? So now it is putting in here, I didn't hard code this to ENUS, but it knows that I am ENUS. But if you open this in Spain, it'd be like, oh, you know, you're uh, Spanish language. And so it would automatically adapt and uh, behave correctly there. I also know not all the languages that are out there now and then when I talk about language, people leave me notes, comments, like why isn't blah, blah, blah language? I can't control what languages Microsoft supports or how they support them, I'm sorry. Hopefully one day they'll get those work for you guys. So, but there you go. So that gives you a little bit of flair around how that would work. You know, cause the other thing that sometimes you guys have is some countries, um, instead of using uh, the period for the decimal separator, use the comma. So you would have to format all that, but you now have some controls here on how all this behaves. So, so that's what I've got today around formatting text or formatting currencies for you, right? I just kind of want to walk you through this. Remember that, you know, at the end of the day, all of this is this big long formula is just spitting out some text. Save it as text if you want text. If you want the number, then you probably want, you know, something like value this, and that'll get the number, but you can't format numbers. Numbers can't be formatted. If it's formatted, it's text. If it's not formatted, it's number. Or maybe it could be. Whew. All right. Well, hopefully that was like helpful. Uh, if you got questions, comments, any of that fun stuff, other rabbit holes you need to see me go down here, leave them below. I probably also should do one on the text working with a date and time because it's another one of those things I just assume everybody knows, but I haven't done enough of. So, yeah, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.